No, uh, Elements of Crime Fiction. Yeah, we did the first A. Yeah. Let's do number four. That's a trick one. Alright, write this down. Come on, come on. It could have been bad. That's bad. <laughs> we could have been all oh, the <laughs> oh, 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 Okay, so the question is number four, uh, which is, um, there can't be much difference between people and the way they live, which is the quote that um, is spoken by uh, Lisa, uh, and it says, does rear window present this to be true? Okay, um, so... Once we've written it out, Eddie, once I've written it out, because I always write it out in my own handwriting so I can think about each individual word in the question and how I want to kind of look at them. What do I do once I have done that? What's, what's the, the first thing? <coughs> Good. You highlight your key terms. You find the words that are very important in the question and you, you kind of think about them. So, for instance, in this one, we would go, what, what do you think is an important word? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, this bit, the difference between people. Okay, that's important, the difference between people. Is this true? Is this true? Good. Is it true? Good. And that can't. It's not that there aren't differences between people. So the question basically asks us Does rear window believe all people are essentially the same. Okay? So the question is basically asking, does Rear Window believe that all people are essentially the same? I think that's a really interesting question because I think there's both a yes and a no in it which, as we all know, are the best essays when there is a yes and a no, okay? So sometimes when I get a question like this that is kind of trickily worded, I often kind of translate it into normal speak so that it's a little bit more palatable to understand and get my ideas out. So I guess what I have to do is kind of come up with my, my short answer, which is yes, but no, isn't it? It's kind of like, yes, essentially, it does kind of show all people are the same, like men and women are the same. Um, but it also has like Thorwald and that he's a murderer and blah, blah, blah. So I would kind of go short answer, yes. Yes, but also no. Okay, which is good because it gives it complexity. Okay, so um, let's talk about my reasons why I would say yes, people, Rear Window says that people are essentially the same. How does Rear Window say that people are essentially the same? McCarthyism. Pardon? For the theme of McCarthyism as well, because in the communist era, yeah. everyone's going to be the same. Oh, okay, right, right. So, like, as in um, people are encouraged to be the same. Yeah, encouraged. That, like, you know, like, so what Ma what Maxim's talking about is, like, how people are, you know, in this very, like, super ultra-conservative society of America in the 50s, people are all encouraged to be the same. Because if you were different, then you were weird, and if you were weird, then you might be a communist, and if you're a communist, you're a bad person, and you probably should go to hell. Um... So, 
yeah, you could definitely use that one and kind of go, you know, that's part of that understanding about, you know, um, wanting to encourage normal. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Or am I like completely like no, 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 no. screwed you over? Okay. No, no, that's what I was trying to say, but you know, okay. I'm not good at England. So. You're not good at England? <laughs> oh, that's okay. I had a kid who used to always say to me in class, he's like, oh, but I'm not good at England. I don't do good at England. You got an A on the exam. I think you're, you're just like... No, you're I'm not even pulling your leg. I'm not even pulling your leg. Um, but he worked really, really hard. But he wasn't very good at England. And he used to say it as a joke. So he didn't actually mean it. I meant it. You meant it? That's all. Um, it's true. It's actually super true. One day I'll bring him in. went through the criteria of what goes high end and what is like a minimum expectation and part of the high end talked about how you need to recognize context and that this is a text written in the 1950s and that has had a direct impact on the kind of values and beliefs and messages that are in it you could definitely do a paragraph on this which would be really interesting talking about how this is saying this is saying, saying something bad and noise. Um, <coughs> um, oh, fuck! Right. Okay. So, this is, this could be used saying like, um, you know, this is part of how Americans were encouraged to be normal and same so that they weren't different because different meant, you know, that that was dangerous and subversive and subversive was seen as a really negative <laughs> You know what makes it worse if you kind of make an impact or I'll just talk through it, okay? Um, so I think that would be a really cool paragraph and certainly would be, um, you know, would be rewarded as long as you could justify this. Now, how you would justify it is the interesting thing because you're actually talking about the context of the text, not the text itself. But what you would have to do is draw it back to the text by saying things like, this can be seen, this, this encouragement of sameness can be seen through and finding ways to, to kind of show how people were encouraged to be the same in the film. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. So, where do we see... Where do we see the encouragement of doing what everybody else does? Yep. When Miss Lonely Half goes to the diner, she's the only one in that bright, 
Good, yeah. And we know that, like, she's overdressed for the occasion. She looks weird. That's not normal. She shouldn't dress like that. That's why she's single and alone and crying herself and probably going to kill herself later. You know, because she's wearing that dress. If she didn't wear that dress, maybe she wouldn't need to kill herself. You know, I feel like that might be a bit too much extrapolation, but you get where I'm going. With it. <laughs> Things escalated really quickly. Which I feel like with Lonely Heart it does. It's like she has one bad date and she's like, well, I'm out. Like, she would not last in the world of Tinder. Like she would. <laughs> not that I would know, I'm married, so I don't know. I don't know, I hear, I hear. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a Yeah, right, right. Especially the yeah. Um, so, Lonely Heart, I think, is a really great... Um, Lonely Heart, I think, is a really great um, example... You know, she's overdressed and alone in that restaurant scene. She's punished for being different, isn't she? Like, you know, we kind of see that scene and we go, she's alone because she's a bit strange. Okay? Um, and the only way that she's going to not be alone is to not be strange. I think the other one that you could use quite easily in this regard is Thorwald when he's the only one that doesn't go and look um, for the dog, you know, when the dog's murdered. And it says, oh, look, it, and I think it's... Um, Lisa, who says, did you see the only person who didn't get up and look? And then it goes to Thorwald and Thorwald sitting in the darkness smoking his cigar. Um, again, he's doing something different which must be suspicious. We look at that scene and how he didn't come to the window like everybody else did and that he's sitting in the dark like nobody else is and so he is different and different is weird and weird is suspicious and so he's probably a, co I mean a murderer. Calm your murderer, whatever. Calm your murderer, calm your murderer, okay? Um, so... Really, that's highlighted by that red glow. That's yeah, definitely. Reds under the bed, you can get as, as metaphoric as you like. Just don't go too deep and like start talking about the Illuminati. Have you seen the guy changing gears like that? <laughs> Have you seen that video? Oh my god. He's a little bit of a He's a fucking silly guy. He's just going to this and say something to give up. Do you know my dog when she yawns? She sounds like you know Iron Man when he charges up before he like shoots something. <laughs> That's what she sounds like. I've got to record it. It does. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a video on that. When the, um, the kid dropped his iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna record it. She sounds exactly like it. So now every time my dog yawns, like she'll yawn and we go. <laughs> we can't. We can't not do it now. Anyway. So lonely heart. Now Thorwald, I kind of wrote very. Haphazardly. So, for all darkness, when the dog dies, like when he's sitting in the darkness when the dog dies, he doesn't look like everyone else. Um, you know, that's suspicious. He must be a commune uh, murderer because remembering that the whole, like, murderer bit is really supposed to just be a substitute for, like, that communist message. You know, he's bad, he's evil, he's a communist. No, he's a, he's a murderer. 
you know, they're kind of equating the two as the same thing. Okay, so we're good with that point. I love that point. It's super deep. I love it. Um, much difference between people and the way they live. Um, how else does he show this? Can I give you a hint? Lisa. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I really need to like find something that can like prop this up so I get a better angle. You know? I'm not getting like good Instagram angles here. It's, it's not pretty. Um, anybody? I gave you a hint. Andrew? Well, yeah. I'm trying to trying to kind of think about what you mean by Jeff and the way. He is a peeping Tom. How does that relate to people being the same? That he watches people. But I think that's something that he actually does say. That it is normal. That everybody does it. Everyone watches. I do. I can't help it. I love watching people. James? Uh, did you say how Lisa wants to stay there with um, Jeff overnight? Like, that she's the only one in that era that... She is different yeah. in that regard, yeah. She is different to the social kind of norm. But that's not what I'm talking about, like, that we're, they're the same. Everybody's the same. Why are we the same, Panache? I Good, okay, so we could definitely use that. All right, let's use that. I like that. It wasn't where I was going, but I still like it, so I don't care. That's a new argument. Yeah. Um, it's a new argument. New argument. New idea, new argument. We'll come back to you. Hold that. Hold it. Hold it. Cherish it. All right. Make us put stupid for the bottom. Yeah, thank you. The thing's 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 but I love it parkour. Yeah, every episode we're... The manager. Mm. Oh, Dwight Schrute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Dwight takes it seriously. He tries to like, quiz him and shit. The best show. It's funny with that story. It's the only show that's funny with that story. Ozark is so good. Oh my goodness. Right. Uh, so, 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 this is definitely a yes paragraph. This is definitely a yes paragraph. Yes. Um, so, I've got Jeff finds parallels between his own life and the lives of his neighbours with the Thorwalds, the newlyweds and the songwriters, um, where he kind of looks at their lives and sees like basically what, his, what he thinks his future would be like if he got married. So that's kind of like a parallel. And also we've got the Lisa one as well, where Lisa is looking into, um, looking into lonely hearts and saying that that's what hers is like, that's what her life is like. And then Jeff looking into torsos and going, no, that's what yours is like. And then her going, well, I know what that life is like. You know how she says that thing about um, she's doing a woman's hardest job, wrestling with wolves. Uh, so, so you could use that as well. And I think that would be really clever um, and really good to kind of um, pull in. And you could even use, actually, now that I'm thinking of it, to throw in a cinematic, you could use the bit with Lonely Heart. You know how Lonely Heart um, is making the dinner for like the pretend husband? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we're in Jeff's apartment where 
she where he's actually getting served a dinner with a what like sh he's got what she wants a partner yeah someone to come home to um, he's got what she's she wants and he's not even seeing it you know and then there's that lovely moment where he parallels it and she does cheers and he cheerses cheerses don't know if that's a word um, so yeah so you could use that and talk about how Hitchcock actually does that on purpose to create that parallel so that we see that parallel, that their lives are actually very similar and yet different. Same, same, but different, you know? Um, only... Hurt my shoulder. Okay, so you could also put in in that paragraph, yeah, the lonely heart being juxtaposed with Jeff at the dinner scene, and that Hitchcock does this juxtaposition so that we go, ah, oh, right, everybody wants the same things in life. You know, like they, everybody wants a partner who loves them, who they can come home to at the end of the day. Lisa and Lonely Heart want the same thing. Jeff, even though he doesn't realise it yet, will cherish the same thing. And what do you think? Ooh. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, so you could even do a paragraph, you know, everyone is lonely, everyone's kind of going through their own loneliness. Um, I would probably want to put something in about gender roles as well, because I always like talking about gender roles because, you know, it's um, But I think you really need to and you're encouraged to at this point because you've got this quote by Lisa and you have to use the quote at some point. You've got to actually utilise it. And She's saying in this bit, it's when they're arguing and he's saying, you couldn't possibly handle my life because you're far too prim, you're far too prissy, you're far too delicate a creature to be able to handle my life. And she says, there can't be that much difference between people and the way they live. You know? And that's her saying, just because you're a man, that doesn't mean you're the one that can handle it. I could handle it too. Just because I wear a dress, that doesn't mean I can't eat a fish head. Um, so I think you really do, you are prompted to use that quote and talk about gender roles. Um, and definitely in this film, he is saying that women can do everything a man can do. You know, that's why Lisa is the hero and the breadwinner. You know, she's the one that pays for the dinner at 21. She pays for the dinner, which is like, that's a big thing. Like, if you have a date in the 50s, the man pays, you know? And she's the one that pursues Jeff, not the other way around. That's super weird. In the 50s, a woman was not supposed to be the pursuer. They were supposed to be pursued. Um, and again, she's the one that solves the mystery. She's the, the hero. And he's the damsel in distress. He's the one that has to get saved with Lisa and Stella bringing the infantry in, isn't it? He gets saved by them. But yeah, he has to rely upon the ladies to help him out at the end. And he calls out for Lisa. <laughs> For help. He's the damsel. He's the damsel in distress. So we can't ignore that. It's so clear that that's supposed to be there. So.
Yes. Do you guys know what I mean when I'm saying damsel in distress? It's like, you know, think about like those old black and white movies and like you'd have a lady at the top of the tower go, oh, someone save me. And then the knight comes along and it's like, oh, I'll save you, just jump down. Yeah, so that's, so Jeff, Jeff is the damsel. Like he's up in his tower slash apartment getting strangled and, and harassed and tussling with this guy and Lisa rushes in like a knight in shining armour um, with the cavalry and saves him. Well, I thought, okay. I thought, uh, thought um, what's his face, Hitchcock was against like yeah. that sort of stuff. Well, I think he, he, he's, against, he's against kind of typical, <coughs> typical man-woman roles. That's why he's kind of taking something that we really are used to, like the woman and the damsel in distress, and flipping it. And going, that's like the man, the one that needs to be saved. Yeah. Right, Zafkus. Uh, are they different paragraphs, those two are? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, yes. That's a paragraph. Yeah. That's a paragraph. Now, obviously, at this stage, we've got three or four paragraphs that are all yeses. And that would be totally fine. If you decided, yes, I'm going to write one, two, three, or I'm going to write one, two, three, or I'm going to do whatever. I think you really have to do this one because I can't see how you're going to incorporate the quote. Otherwise, I can't see it fitting into any of the others. So really, I think gender roles you're going to have to do because... In order to say, yes, you have answered the whole question, you need to cover the quote. Okay? So if there's a quote, you've got to cover it. Um, you could do a no paragraph as well. There's no reason why you couldn't say no. Um, why could we say no? What's no about it? Why, why do we not think people are the same? Pardon? Yeah, well, I think I think even like s some people are devious monsters, like Thorwald. He's supposed to be this kind of other, isn't he? That rebels, that doesn't go with the social norms. I'm running out of room. So you can pick like two and one, yeah? Like yep. two yes, one no, one yes, yes. Can I just say though, <clears throat> now that I was writing that, and this is what happens when you plan and you plan well, you actually come up with way better essays than if you don't plan because you start kind of testing out your ideas. And as I was writing that, I kind of went, but wait, you know the bit before the tussle and how he comes in and he's like, what do you want? Do you want money? I don't have any. And he and he becomes human. Instead of this monster that we were watching across the courtyard, he becomes human and scared and like vulnerable and we go, Oh, he's just a person. He's not he's not a monster, he's just a person. And he is the same as everybody else. Do you see what I mean? So, like, through your planning process, you can actually kind of change how you think about it. So, if you don't plan, you're a moron. Short story. Yes, but how do you, how do you touch on common sense with both yes and no? With this one? Yeah, say, so like, you've got a yes. Agree so, and I would probably, I would probably touch this early on, maybe, like, with, actually, maybe even this one. Slip it in there. Don't make it a whole paragraph, just make it a little bit. Or if you made it a paragraph, make it 
a very small one. Yeah. Just kind of touching on it, which is fine. All right. <clears throat> Mary's got something to say. And we have to listen to Mary because Mary always says input and stuff. We do. We do. I was going to say, like, They all have their own story, yeah. yeah. But I think the stories kind of show us that they are ultimately all the same. They're all seeking the same thing. Yeah. Like, so, for instance, the, you know, <coughs> Lisa is seeking love and, like, a partner. So is, um, so is Lonely Heart. Um, Torso is kind of dealing with wolves and it has to deal with the fact that she's beautiful. And because she's beautiful, it's kind of a burden which is also what Lisa has to deal with, the burden of beauty. Um, Jeff looks at these married couples and goes, I can see my future being like that, I don't want to be like that. So we see all these parallels. So I think even though the stories are different, ultimately Hitchcock is saying, but we all go through the same shit. Yeah. No, not necessarily, no. No. Right, questions, queries, concerns? <laughs> nice try. Um, right, can I rub that off? Move to another one? Right, I'll give it a couple of seconds. While we're waiting, can we also get an idea of what question you'd like to do next? Because it is 4.14, I can probably smash out a quick question. People here. Hi. Um, so, um, the question that we're going to do is is a Libby suggestion, and the Libby suggestion is actually one that I think is is kind of tricky, but I think is doable. Um, asks us. Asks us how does sound and camera use contribute to the societal messages of Rear Window. So it's it's asking particularly about sound and camera use. So you can't talk about any sort of cinematic techniques. You can only talk about two types, um, which does kind of back you into a little bit of a corner. So the only... The only tech, the only evidence we're allowed to use is sound and tech, and camera angles and camera use. It's tricky. That's a hard one. What's the question again? Sorry. Are you, you going to write up the question? Yeah, yeah, I'm oh. going to write it. I'm just waiting for these guys yeah, to finish. Can we get a hard one like that? You could. I wrote it, so maybe. Do you make them up? Like, yeah. Do you base them on anything? Because it's asking yeah. how, it's not saying camera and sound are used to as well as it's not giving you that. It's not a discuss question, it's a how question. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky one. Right, have we got all this? Now, if you haven't got all this written down, ladies, gents, if you haven't got all this written down, Daniel, my lovely assistant, um, has taken a photo. So he'll, so he'll send them to me, and I'll put the photos up along with this horrendous video. And um, you can, you can continue to to get stuff. So I've got to rub it off though, because otherwise we're going to run out of time. Um, so, um, where should I start? Start here. Yeah, what'd you have to do? Thanks. <laughs> 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 
Always motor suspension speakers are always twice. Yeah, no, they're always twice. 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 No, they're always Later. Hey, when I get home, I'll search it up, alright? Alright. <laughs> so. Um, so the question. The question is boxing us into a corner a little bit. We can only talk about sound and camera angles because it's not a discuss question. So it's not. Sound and camera angles contribute to, contribute to the societal messages of rear window discuss, which would then open you up to go, yes, sound and, and camera angles do contribute, but also these things contribute. It doesn't give you that. It says, how do these two contribute? Which means you can only talk about these two. You are not invited to talk about anything other than these two. No. Oh. So... It does make it a little bit tricky, but it's not impossible. A low end, a low to middle end will go, all right, I'm going to write a paragraph on sound. I'm going to write a paragraph on camera angles. And then I'm going to write a paragraph on... How they relate. Maybe how they relate. Yeah. Um, but they're going to find it really hard to get to that third paragraph and they're going to really box themselves in about the amount of depth that they can use. You can't do two long paragraphs. What you? I would suggest is a much better response is to go, all right, what are three societal messages that I want to cover? So maybe a gender roles, maybe something about marriage, maybe something about McCarthyism, disconnectedness, something like that. And then, once I've established each of my societal messages, then using sound, sorry, using sound and camera angles as my evidence, I would justify my responses. That's going to be a way better essay. One, because you're not going to have that weird third paragraph that's just kind of a bit of a, oh, let's just pull this bad boy together and get it done. Um, but it's also going to be, something that you are going to be able to address what is the first criteria, which is asking you about what, what about the context of this piece? What about the ideas that are being explored? What messages are being explored? You're really hitting that idea and you're going to do it with super depth because if you did it with the camera angles one, you would only be able to write maybe a sentence or two on each of the societal messages, which is going to really screw you over. You're just not going to have good depth on it. Does that make sense? Cool, so let's go. What kind of societal messages do we want to hit? Because remember, we've got to be able to prove them with sound and camera angles. So what do we want to use? Gender roles. Gender roles, okay. What about gender roles? What's my message? That, that, okay. That women can do all that men can. Yeah, they can. Um, except downloading things illegally. I'm not great at that. But everything else is pretty much fair game. Um, yeah. My husband has to have some sort of point. Um, so, all right, what's another one? What do we want to use? I like the disconnectedness. 
because I think it's a little bit left of centre. Less people will write about disconnectedness in society. I think that's kind of nice to do something that other people won't. Everyone will do the women one, something about women, but it would be nice to do something that's a little bit different, which is that disconnectedness. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, but if I was going to put stereotypes, I'd probably sub it in instead of that. Like, I wouldn't want to do two paragraphs that are about gender roles just because, like, I feel like it's too much of the same same. I'm going to get too much overlap. But yeah, you could definitely do challenging stereotypes. Wouldn't that be like an, that be like an example of gender roles? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you could put it in with that, definitely. Yeah. So I would either sub it out and talk about typical male roles, typical female roles, or I'd just work it into the discussion about women can do everything, men can do smashing stereotypes. Um, so we could do a paragraph on women can do all that men can do. We can do a paragraph on disconnectedness to community. Um, and then we can use, obviously, that lovely little kind of speech that's given by um, the, the dog owner about, like, you know, neighbours care for each other, they care if they live or die, blah, blah. Um, what's a third societal thing we could use that marriage. we could talk marriage. about? Marriage. We could do marriage, yeah. But can I just suggest, though... I would want to do McCarthyism and about the the fear and the because I feel like I feel like again I feel like I get too much similarity whereas the McCarthyism is so separate and it hits that idea of talking about context talking about the 1950s and yeah yeah so I feel like that would be a better hit if I was going to do marriage I'd probably sub it out for the women one but how can camera angles well, we can talk about things yes, like, yeah, yeah, that we're getting Jeff's point of view, that we're feeling suspicious, and suspicious means bad, and suspicious means dangerous, and suspicious means communist. Focus on the whole way, should we like? Frisky, are we? All right, so we have five minutes, so we've got to move fast. We've got to move fast. Nasha, are you ready? Alright, so how am I going to use the evidence, how am I going to use sound and camera angles to justify about this, this message of McCarthyism, the fear of communism and that it's everybody's duty to do something about it. That if you think someone is suspicious then you are, you are required to do something about it. How am I going to justify that? with sound and with camera stuff. Point of view of Jeff. Point of view of Jeff, good. Okay, that we are directly across from him, that we are watching him all the time. Yeah? Okay, so the fact that the Thorwald apartment is directly opposite encourages us to see the Thorwald apartment as the primary focus. Does that make sense? Okay, what else? What else could we talk about?
You could say the use of sound um, to create fear of the unknown, like fear of an unknown danger, which is really what communism, what they McCarthyism and the and the fear of communism was all about. It was fear of a danger unknown. That you knew something was bad, something was dangerous, but you didn't really know why it was bad and dangerous. You just knew that it was, that it was a threat. Does that make sense? I think that's really nice because you can both team it with the scream and then you can team it with the idea of, you know how when the scream happens we get the darting of the camera and we go back to Jeff and we see the, the fear on his face and we go back to look for the scream. I think that works really, really well, that fear of the unknown. Yep. You said diegetic and non-diegetic sounds. Diegetic yeah. is natural and non-diegetic. Yeah, yeah. So that's the scream. That scream is that diegetic sound that it's like... You know, and that's really good because you're using your meta language. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because meta language is all those like fancy words that we teach you that we go, oh, that's a Beldung's Roman, that is a whatever, that's a diegetic sound. That's all those fancy words that we teach you. Um, so you could throw in that, and they love that. Um, <clears throat> right, I've got one more minute. Um, disconnectedness of community. How am I going to justify that? With sound and camera angles. Yep. So um, this door sitting in the dark is smoking. How is that a camera angle or sound? It's got to be a camera angle or a sound. Can I say, where, where is the pet owner's apartment? What? Pet owner? The, yeah, the pet owner, the, the dog owner. Oh, I'm just saying he's a pet owner. <laughs> the pet owner's apartment. <laughs> Things go weird. What film has Lance been showing? <laughs> Jesus. Alright. Alright. Come back, come back. You're nearly done. Come back, come back, don't work. Right. Tell me what. What floor are the pet owners on? <laughs> the floor. Ah, so when we are looking at Mrs. Pet Owner delivering the speech, what angle are we looking at? It's a low angle shot, which then would make her seem more superior and powerful. Good, okay. So that would be a camera angle. with me I know you're tired I feel you um, so Mrs. Petono delivers her speech and she's shot from a low angle which therefore gives her credibility she looks strong she looks powerful she looks like we're holding her on a pedestal she's right so that kind of gives her point credibility the other thing that happens is that all the diegetic sound stops. We have no other sound going on in that scene except for Mrs. Pet Owner giving her speech. Remember the party stops and everyone comes outside. Before that it's really noisy and raucous and then when the scream happens and she comes outside, the Pet Owner screams, comes outside, delivers her speech. While the speech is being delivered, nobody is talking. Okay, so you could pair that with no diegetic 
Sounds. Wall. Stage. Is delivered. Why? <coughs> What's significant? Stephen, tell me. What is significant about there being no diegetic music going, a uh, diegetic sound going on when the pet owner is speaking? Why is that significant? What does that do? Okay. Andrew? I think it builds uh, tension. It definitely builds tension and it requires us to focus on what she's saying. There is nothing distracting us. We are just listening to her. Okay? And that's really significant because there are very few other points in the film where there is nothing else going on. There's usually something else going on in the apartments. Tension and credibility. Mm. And just from like, just from like a, a like a director standpoint, this is obviously something that Hitchcock really wants us to hear. He wants us to be very clear about what Mrs. Pet Owner says. She, he wants us to walk away knowing exactly what she said. Why? Because he wants us to know about this disconnectedness of community. So that gives a lot of credibility to her speech. Does that make sense? Right. Well, time is up. It is 4.34. You have worked really, really well. You now have two essays. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure, as always. I'm dying. We'll turn this off. Oh, my God. That's not good. It's a real, it's a real crotch shot. That's not good. Let's cut that out. Stop.